understand where this person is coming from. They ask the group a question, do you think there is anybody in your family or in your life who is going to take care of all these goals? Life insurance is always paid for. You either pay for it now or your family pays for it later. Savings was an investment or insurance versus investment. One enhances your self-esteem and the other saves your self-respect. You make the choice. They both complement each other. It isn't a substitute for one another. I'm sure none of you in this room can pull your shirt longer to make it look like a trouser. Disability versus death. Very often you meet people who say, I have more than enough to cover two or three generations. So I talk about disability. To most people, disability can be worse than death, right? So if anything goes wrong with their health, they would be drained off with everything that they have created, everything that they have saved. So if the client just gives me 3 or 4% of the wealth that he has created, I would be able to recreate that asset today. With a drop of an ink and the stroke of a pen, you can create an asset worth millions. And you have the power of doing it. The financial pyramid versus Maslow's hierarchy of needs. There are some people who haven't actually looked at a financial pyramid. They don't know what it looks like. So I normally help them to understand a financial pyramid with regards to Maslow's hierarchy of needs. Just as you require food, clothing, shelter for your physiological needs, you require a good house and an adequate life insurance to balance your financial goals. The danger of living too long or dying too soon. Sometimes I ask my client, at what time would you like to retire? What age would you like to retire? How much of money would you have earned when you retire? Would you be able to save this income? Would you be able to keep this money safe? Let's say your client is age 40 and he'd like to retire after 20 years. He would have earned, let's say, 10 million from 20 years of working in this current occupation. If he just gives you 3 or 4% of that income, you can replace that asset today. So you would be protecting him with regards to a danger of dying too soon. And if he lives too long, that insurance policy is going to give him much more benefits than any other savings that would have created for him. Yeah? Put a value to your life today. Very often we meet clients who say, I would like to protect my house, I would like to cover my car. They don't like to cover themselves. So I asked them, if something has to happen to your house or to your car, how fast would you be able to replace that asset? If you were sitting in a puppet theater, would you insure the puppets or the one who pulls the strings? If you died in an accident, how much would your family sue the company for? What if you died in your sleep? How much have you left behind for your family? At some time, you need to have the courage to ask the questions to the client and tell him the way it is. Because death cannot be explained in any other way. You just have to tell them the way it is. And of course, at the end of the day, what sells is you. Earning a customer's trust begins with who you are. You have to build the credibility about yourself first, then about your company, and then about your product. You have to be very simple and humble at all times. Simplicity works the best. Abraham Lincoln once wrote, if you would want to win a man to your cause, first convince him that you are his sincere friend. Whenever I meet a client, I always try to understand where is he coming from, how he has grown in life. I never talk about insurance. I never go as a salesperson. I go as a counselor. I go as a consultant. And then I sit with him and try to understand his ambitions. Very often you'll have your clients telling you, I never meet insurance agents. I never talk to them. I don't know why I'm spending so much of time with you. Nobody ever asked me these questions. That's the time you have sealed a bond with him. You have created a permanent relationship with your client. When you're scared, admit it. In the initial years, when I was an insurance agent, I used to really be very scared of meeting sophisticated, high net worth clients. I used to fumble and be very nervous. 
So I should just tell them I'm very glad for this opportunity, but at this point of time, I am very nervous talking to you, like I'm nervous talking to you right now. And immediately my client would burst into a smile because he knew that was a genuine comment. He felt good about it. He felt important about it. So if you're scared, just admit it. No one's going to eat you up. The pull and the push theory. The fastest way to grow is to surround yourself with people who are smarter than you. So please look to your left and your right. If you find someone who's not smarter than you, you can change your seats. This is a free country. Okay, a lot of people have found incredible support, not only from their spouses, but also from their teams at work. Your housekeeping person who keeps faxing you those additional questionnaires whenever you have not taken it to the client. Your security who opens the office whenever you want, probably on a Sunday and helps you with a lot of paperwork. Your camp shop, your customer service, your underwriting departments, your top management who would keep changing a lot of rules to make it convenient for you. So you need to thank all of them. You need to wish all of them because they have been the spokes of your success. Don't criticize competition. The best way to win and hold the confidence of others is to apply the rule of the world's greatest diplomat, Benjamin Franklin. He said, I will speak ill of no man, but the good I know of everybody. Probably your client must have bought a huge policy from the competitors, and he would just want to know your opinion. So don't criticize competition. Ask and you should receive. I always ask for an appointment. When you ask for an appointment, you get a better hearing. You let your customer know that you are placing time and value for his time because he would like to feel important. He just want, don't want to meet anybody. I normally use the telephone as a very important medium for screening my clients. I would not like to meet someone who doesn't want to meet me, right? So whenever I'm asking for an appointment, it helps me to make every call an event. I get a better hearing. Ask for the check. Very often, your client is not able to assess what more is expected from him. After the fact finding is done, the proposal is over, and then there is a deep silence from the agent as well as the prospect. Nobody knows who should make the first move. So I remove the application form and I start filling it. And I ask the prospect, can I have a look at your passport? Do you have a driving license right here? So I should not make a spelling mistake while writing your name. Would you like to go for an appointment on Saturday at 8.30 in the morning? That appointment is kept specially free for you. These things have helped me to actually close my applications because I had a unique case just before coming here to um, New Orleans. There was a client of mine who kept saying, I want to do it. I just want to do it, but I don't know when. I'm waiting for the right date and the numbers and the stars in the sky to give me the right time so that I can sign the application form. So I told him, let's do all this later. Why don't you go for your medical appointment first? And it was a Saturday. So he said, okay, let's go for the medical appointment. He went for the medical appointment and in the evening he gave me a call. Can you tell me what's the status of my medicals? I said, I'm sorry. I just can't correlate the medicals if I don't have the form. So I need to fill up the application form. I need to submit the check. And then my underwriters, we correlate your medicals with the application form. So he got the message. I went there on Sunday and we filled the application form and that was one of the biggest cases that helped me to qualify for my CEO counsel. So I normally use these things for a close. Or you can just simply ask the client, how would you like to pay? Would you like to pay quarterly, annually, semi-annually? That's when you'll know whether the deal is going through or not. Ask for references. Initially, I used to hate asking for references because I used to feel obligated how could I ask for references from a client? He's somebody I don't know. Will he appreciate me going and asking or selling insurance to some of his friends? What will they think of him? Or whatever reason. So I started a new strategy. I said, I won't ask for references. I will ask the client to recommend my services to someone else. So I, I tell the client, if you think whatever we have accomplished is something that you are satisfied with, would you like to recommend my services to your friends so that they can benefit from it? 
That's when he feels that he is doing a favor, not to me, but to his friend. Who will benefit from my services? So I use the word recommendations instead of references. And of course, after you've done a good fact finder, you will definitely get three to four good names. Connect and network with your clients. Everyone likes to deal with the person who is alive, who is sociable. Nobody likes to deal with the person who is dull. So you need to be visible as an agent advisor. Belong to some community, belong to some group. Have some activity in your life that's happening. Network with your clients. I normally send greeting cards or wish the client on his birthday or let's say wedding anniversaries. I normally, you know, for wedding anniversaries, remind the spouse one day before because normally men do forget their wedding anniversaries. So this has helped me to maintain more relationships. The most effective way for a person to remember his wife's birthday is to forget it only once. In terms of networking, I try to build relationships from within my client. After doing a fact finder, I have identified one of my clients would like to have a house. He needs to buy a house wherever in the city. And I correlate him or introduce him to a person who is a builder, who is one of my clients. So each of my clients can benefit from the services from the other. Sometimes my clients ask me, Merlin, do you do this too? I say, no, I don't do this for a living but I'd like to be resourceful for my clients. If I can help you in any way, so be it. You need to establish your uniqueness with your client. In India, we have a festival of lights called Diwali. Diwali is celebrated across all caste, creed, religion. There isn't any barrier. So me being a Christian, I also celebrate Diwali. And at Diwali, my children and I, we paint this beautiful pot clays, you know, with a diya in it. I gift it not only to my clients, but also to the staff members of his office. Tell me how many insurance agents would like to gift a candle or at Christmas to their clients? How many of them would go and send a flower on a friendship day to the client? Hardly any one of them. This is the way you can establish a relationship with your client, not just call him up for renewals or meet him on annual reviews. Network with your client on medical appointments. I love to go with my client on medical appointments. There's a selfish reason for that. Most people don't like to go for medicals. They're totally stressed out. When I meet the client at the medical appointment, he is totally away from his sophisticated environment. He is all by himself. He needs some moral support. So I talk to him, thinks of various interests, maybe magazines, maybe sports, maybe whatever. Sometimes I also carry sandwiches because after two hours of being fasting, you know, he's so tired. So people have appreciated that this person has gone out of the way and done something for me. So when the client is at the medicals and when he's relaxed, his medical report will be quite good. So that will help my case to get paid. That's why I go for the medicals with my clients to help them feel relaxed. Okay. Once I went to the medical center and there was a caption, smoking helps you to reduce weight one lung at a time. Invest in yourself. Investment is the price of admission. People who make the biggest investment, who pay the bigger price, get the better seat. So MDRT, they have special seats for people in the front. You must invest in your relationships. Your success means nothing if you're not able to share with the people you love, right? You must invest in personal development programs like series, seminars, go for training programs, improve your skill, improve your knowledge. Invest in technology and a personal assistant. Initially, I thought I could do all the jobs alone. I couldn't trust somebody else to do my job until I realized that you can never climb to the second level unless and until you're, you're free with more time. That will help you get more profits for your business. So then I hired staff for myself. Invest to keep physically fit. Your career longevity depends on how fit you are. If you need to be here to enjoy the fruits of your labor, you need to exercise daily, at least half an hour every day. Invest in a library. The person you'd like to be tomorrow depends on the books you read today. We can never learn enough from our own experiences 
but from the lessons of others. Invest in charity. I call charity an investment, and I feel this should be an important part of everyone's financial goal. When you keep aside something for the society, when you give something back to the society, you will be blessed a hundred times more, right? And finally, count your blessings. When you put something in a slot machine, you don't have to say thank you. It will automatically give you whatever you want. But when you receive an answer to your prayer, you have to make sure that you say thank you properly and promptly. My presence out here is a testimony of all the blessings that I have received, and I'm very, very grateful to it. He answers our prayers in three ways. He says yes and gives you what you want. He says no and gives you something better. He says wait and gives you the best. So ladies and gentlemen, you need to say thank you as often as possible. I'd like to tell you a small story. There was this little blind boy who was sitting on the corner of the street and begging for arms. And he had a placard at the side of his corner. On that it was written, I am blind, I need your help. For a lot of days he, he kept sitting at the street corner, but nobody put any coins in his little bowl. One fine day a man came up to him, took that placard from him and wiped it away. He wrote something on it and went away. From that moment onwards, that little boy's bowl started jingling with coins. He kept waiting patiently for that man to return because he was curious what was written on that board that prompted everyone to put some coins in it. Finally, one day he heard the footsteps of that man coming up to him. He stopped him and he asked him, Sir, are you the one who has written something on my board? He said, Yes. He said, Sir, what is it that you wrote that has made me so happy today? The man said, I just wrote one simple sentence. Today is a very beautiful day, but I cannot see it. So all of us out here have gone through a lot of struggle, a lot of pain to be where we are. We need to take that time off and appreciate and say thank you for just being healthy, for the families that we have, for being here at MDRT, for whatever that you may think has helped you to grow in life. Yeah? I'd like to say a little thank you to all of them who have helped me in this presentation. My friend Prasenjit from India, who has helped me to put this whole thing together. Jim McCoy, Razia, the MDRT team, who has been helping me with a lot of emails, and Paul and Peter, who are looking after the sound out there. And you wonderful people for attending this focus session and helping me to speak well out here. I'd like to say thank you and I'd like to salute you as my heroes of the industry. I'd like to dedicate this little song for each one of you for being my heroes. So if you know this song, probably you could sing along. There's a hero if you look inside your heart, you don't have to be afraid of what you are. There's an answer. If you search within your soul, and the sorrow that you know will melt away. And then a hero comes along, with the strength to carry on and he'll cast your fears aside and you know you can survive so when you feel that hope is gone look inside you very strong and you'll finally see the truth that a hero lies in you it's a long road and you face the world alone And one reaches out ahead But feels alone You can find love If you search within yourself 
and that emptiness that's there will disappear. And then a hero comes along with the strength to carry on, and he'll cast your fears aside. And you know you can survive. So when you feel that hope is gone, look inside, you're very strong. And you'll finally see the truth that a hero lies in you. So ladies and gentlemen, you can achieve anything you want in life. Thank you. Thanks for being here. Thank you, Marilyn, for the wonderful, fantastic, informative presentation and that lovely song, too. Friends, now we prepare to spend about 12 minutes for the question answer. If you have any questions, you will find some of the microphones here. Please come to the microphone and ask the question very clearly. State your name, your home city, and ask the question. Submit your question to one, if possible. You can go ahead. Hi, thank you so much. First of all, your confidence is really contagious. And uh, I think it gives us all something in addition to your presentation. My name thank is you. Dove, and I read in the little bio that you came into the industry per chance. Right? This wasn't something that you decided to do. And I was curious how that happened. What, uh, what brought you to this? OK, that's a nice question. Um, I never believed in insurance. I hated insurance. And as a professional where I was working earlier, I never entertained insurance agents in my office. And one fine day, I decided to quit my job and be with my family. But during the course of my life, I met my ex-colleague, who introduced me to my company, Max New York Life. And I just went there to understand what this is all about. When I went there, the training that I got, it actually converted me into an evangelist, you know, from a non-believer to an evangelist. And I think I joined insurance because I felt and I could understand that this is the only business where I could do something for someone else and earn some more money out of it. So it was a noble profession. I could actually protect so many more lives. I mean, each one of us out here, we actually have an immortal life, you can say. When you are ensuring a family, when you have a child, I mean, you know, the, the child will grow up and the insurance cover which you have sold to his parents, that is going to help that child to have a better future. So I feel even long before I am gone, that person is going to remember me forever because of me, his family was protected. He could have a future. So this is what prompted me to join this profession. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks. See, si, see. Si. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, you can go ahead. You're asking a question? Spanish. Espanol. Is a translate. OK. OK. Uh, yeah, I can hear you. Eh, primero que nada, muchas felicidades. Eh, yo soy Fabián. Thank Vengo you. de México. Te felicito mucho. Y una de las frases que me gustaría ver si puedes este, volver a repetir fue cuando pagas el seguro ahora o tu familia lo pagará mañana, ¿es así? Uh, yeah, uh, what he is asking is, um, I used one phrase in my uh, presentation that insurance is paid for today or your family will pay for it tomorrow, right? Okay. Uh, Muchas gracias. When, okay. Uh, when you're writing down your financial goals, yeah, uh, one second. 
Uh, yeah, because I'm getting confused in this. <laughs> okay. Um, your question was, uh, insurance is paid for today so that your family can have it tomorrow. Yeah? Uh, whenever you're writing down your financial goals, okay, you're looking at something which is in the future. You don't need all those financial goals on day.